Hello everyone, it is Coach Callie V and we are officially in the new year. Yes, I am, what, what's today, the 8th? Eight days in and I've been sitting on a topic that I wanted to hold off and talk about until I was able to start kind of unveiling this within my own pitching lessons and coaching. So, uh, for those of you that follow any kind of pitching rules, coaches, or even athletes, or even parents, as of January 1, 2020, pitchers now have more options as to how to pitch. Notice how I didn't say changes. So, I wanted to just clear this up because I kind of had this feeling all these things were going to arise, like why are we changing something, why are we fixing it, my favorite, this is my favorite quote, why are we fixing something if it isn't broken, boom, this is why I'm saying options. So far this week, um, today will be my third session with another pitcher, I've been able to allow them to use the two new ways of pitching, okay? So if you don't know those ways, we have the original way where two feet have to be on the mound, okay? Then we have the, so as if I'm a left-handed, not left-handed, right-handed pitcher, my pull is going to be my left leg. So we have the option of starting on the mound with both feet, we have the option of stepping off and then going into our pitch, or we have the option of starting with our pull fit off, okay? Right foot will always stay intact, okay, with the front of the mount. So what I've been doing is allowing my pitchers to do one, maybe up to six, so two of each, just to see, just to make sure. And I love this because when they're good at something and then they kind of step out of that comfort zone and they try something new, it gives them a whole new respect for what they're good at. Everybody hits a slump, everybody hits a wall. Um, I see this in pitchers that, especially around the College World Series time when it's all over ESPN, I notice probably in the age group of, I wanna say 10 to 12, I'll notice my pitchers start doing something funky. And I love it because that tells me they're watching, they're, they're watching these pitchers play, they're watching softball on TV, but at the same time, their bodies still aren't in that place to be able to accept that extra movement in order to throw a strike properly. So I am a coach who focuses on mechanics. I do not care if you throw strikes and like if your mechanics are not there and you throw strikes, that means nothing to me other than we got to fix your mechanics. Yes, you're going to take about 20 steps back mentally, physically, emotionally, but we've got to get your mechanics right so you, not only can you throw just something down the middle, right, because you want to start there, but you can start hitting corners, you can start messing with your speed, you can start curving the ball, you can start rising the ball, you can start dropping the ball, and then by the time you graduate high school, you have three solid pitches in your pocket ready to show any coach in the world, this is what my house is built on. Boom. Okay? So, Coaches, if you're watching this and you're feeling kind of intimidated, and I'm not even intimidated, maybe just kind of like I don't even know what I'm doing, I'm going to reference Amanda Scarborough, her Insta channel. Let me just pull it up right here. I'll give you the IG. If you follow me on social media, I've been posting about this stuff on my IG account, which is at Coach Callie V. Um, and Amanda's, I'm pretty sure it's just her name, but I'm going to double check. Yep, it's just Amanda Scarborough. She posted a very detailed, very, very detailed video as to the changes um, and how far up it goes. I mean, it's all the way up into collegiate level. So I've been coaching for 22 years and I've seen a lot of pitching rules change and I've seen them go right back, okay? Um, I've always taught both feet on because of that reason. They'll allow this to happen, but then they change it back to where both feet have to start. So I always start here. But now, knowing that this is all the way up to the collegiate level, these changes, options, these options for pitchers, that makes me think that it's going to stick around a little bit longer. Could be five, could be ten years. I don't know. When if you've been coaching long enough, 
and been around a sport, you know that a lot of times it takes the ultimate worst case scenario to get anything to change. So, so anyways, so you want to pay attention. Amanda Scarborough talks about it as far as different organizations that you're playing under, like what tournament, like US play, excuse me, you, USSA, sorry, or ASA, all the different acronyms. Um, they're going to have different rules and regulations as far as how your pitchers can pitch. So coaches, you've got, that's just one more thing you got to add to your tool belt, right? More of a reason to have a pitching coach on staff. <laughs> Go pitching coaches. I'm just teasing. But so that's the main focus of this video. But the second focus of this video is I came across an older post um, from, I think it was Softball World. Let me look because I sent the link to my Facebook. And it literally was like I was talking to myself. Like, hi, Callie. Hi, coach. Nice to meet you. Brr, this is what, you know, it, it felt like home. But it was a clip of, let's see. I can't see anything. I'm like, brr. It was from Flow Softball, excuse me. And it says, why we should rethink the way we develop pitchers. And it was by Dana Sorensen. Okay. Pitching coach. And I love the fact that she said, we as pitchers are a different breed. We're a different breed of athlete. Sometimes we get put to the side. And at least, I don't feel like it's like this now, but maybe it was 20 years ago. Um, even softball in general, people don't think it's an athletic sport because you can eat and play at the same time. Like, you can chew sunflower seeds and play at the same time. But it is a sport. And for those of you that have ever put a pitcher in a different category, saying they're not an athlete, it's that's wrong. Like, anybody who plays a sport, even cheer. Like, there's a great show on Netflix right now called Cheer. I'm watching it because it is about competition. It's about coaching. It's about athletes. Okay? So, sorry about that rant. But I came across this, and she talked about how it's not always just about pitching. And I think in the past when I've coached, I've stepped out of the box of just traditionally once a week we're going to throw. Okay? But this week we're going to work on this. And then next week we'll throw. And I think that honestly kind of frightened people because that was the only time their daughter was throwing all week. So when coach started implementing... Uh, band work and other things and oh my gosh my daughter's not getting her pitches in how am I gonna make this work I think that shocked a lot of people so when I saw this I was like this lady is like talking to me like I love this because pitching practice is not always about pitching the ball okay those of you that know me those of you that have been coached by me maybe you're currently getting coached by me I am a coach the way you're going to coach in a game, play the way you're going to play in the game type of coach, type of athlete. So I've been doing this one for years. We're going to get done with this lesson as soon as you can get out of the inning, throw the strike. And maybe it's not a strike. Maybe you're trying to hit a high outside corner. It's got to be there before practice is over. Okay. So I really liked that focus kind of being distributed back into the athlete versus how is the athlete performing on a pitching basis because all these things over here that we're working on that's actually going to help them so if you're in the how would you say shopping realm of pitching coaches or however you want to dub it look for a coach that is going to coach your child in the round way not just one way not just this is you're going to do this we're going to focus on this the whole entire practice because these are things that you as parents need to look for. Even coaches, coaches that are parents or even coaches that are making recommendations for other pitching coaches. Are these pitching coaches teaching a little girl how to jump with balance? That's huge. That's an explosive drill that's going to help her the longer she pitches, right? So... That is basically why I did this video today. I'm starting off the year with the big change. 
of the two new pitching options. You count the original and you have three pitching options right now going on in numerous different associations um, as well as all the way up to the collegiate level. So, and then the second part of this video, just talking about pitching practice when you're working with a pitching coach, it's not always about just throwing. There's gonna be a lot more going into that practice. You may work squats, you may work with weights, you may work with bands, you may do plyometrics. Okay, those are the kind of coaches you wanna look for. So if you guys have any questions, any comments below, let me know. And I hope you guys are having a great start to the new year. Um, I'm excited to see what these options allow pitchers to do. And I think it's gonna open up a lot of doors for a lot of pitchers that maybe strength wise just aren't there yet, they can at least start to learn the simple mechanics of how to throw a pitch and then eventually get to a place where say in 10 years they put the change back to where it's mandatory, both feet have to be on the mound, then they're not gonna have a problem. If you guys have any questions, like I said, just ask, I'm here to help. Thanks for watching, God bless.